You know, there's something funny about winter weather. Everybody takes it seriously. Um, don't get me wrong, people still make stupid choices about winter weather, they go out when they shouldn't and so on, but pretty much everybody's worried about things like frostbite, hypothermia, their car being in a wreck on icy roads, whatever. You know, which is kind of odd considering, I mean, things like tornadoes and stuff like that, people will gladly go out and drive out there and go chase the storm or try to ride out a hurricane, but people do take winter weather seriously, and as well they should. There are many important winter weather hazards we need to be worried about. Part of the story is about wind chill temperature. Now, wind chill temperature is an important hazard that we can encounter in the winter. And winter, uh, wind chill is about the fact that at the same temperature, you feel colder when the wind is blowing than when it is calm. Now, that is a tricky thing to think through as to why that would be. To understand why you feel colder when the wind is blowing, you need to understand how your body actually experiences warmth and coldness. See, as part of being alive, your body is continuously producing heat. If you didn't have ways to get rid of that heat to the air around you, you would cook. So you are continuously losing heat to the environment around you. If you are producing heat inside of your body faster than you are losing it, you feel hot. If you are producing heat and slower than you are losing it to the outside world, you feel cold. So when you go outside on a cold, wintry day, if you didn't have any coats or hats or sweaters or anything like that on, you would feel very cold because the, you would be losing a great deal of heat to the outside world faster than you are producing in your body. But of course, you normally go out with coats and sweaters and hats and things like that. And that results in the formation of a layer of air that is trapped inside of your jacket, inside of your hat, inside of your sweater. That air is being heated by your body so that the air that is touching you is not all that cold. You are not losing all that much heat to the outside world. The air that's touching your skin is not 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The air that's touching your skin is much warmer. Your body has expended heat to warm up your jacket, to warm up the air inside your jacket, to warm up the air inside of your sweater, or whatever. But when it's windy, that becomes a different proposition. Because when it's windy, the wind flows through the fabrics and carries that warm air away and then replaces it with cold air that your body has to expend heat again to warm up. See how on a windy day you're kind of fighting a losing battle? Your body is continuously expending heat to warm up air inside of your mittens, inside of your hat, inside of your sweater or whatever, and then the wind just keeps taking that heat away and it does you no good. So you feel colder because your body is continuously trying to replace heat that it is losing. Um, we quantify that with the so-called wind chill temperature. And the idea of the wind chill temperature is that you are, it is the temperature you, it feels like. It is the temperature you would, okay, how to describe this here. It is the temperature, the temperature would need to be with no wind for you to be losing heat at the same rate you're losing heat now with the wind. So like if the temperature right now is 32 degrees but the wind chill is 20 degrees, what that means is you, even though it's still 32 degrees outside, you are losing heat as if you were outside in 20 degree weather. Okay? It's just kind of a, it's subjunctive like that. It is, it is saying this is the temperature the air would need to be for you to be losing the same amount of heat as you are losing now under these windy conditions. And we have a whole table of these kind of things. Anytime though the wind is greater than zero, the wind chill temperature is lower than the air temperature. If there's no wind, the wind chill temperature and the air temperature are the same. This is actually not the most scientific of ideas. This is actually kind of a funny story as to how we came up with this, I, this would not be on the test, but the way they came up with this had to do with researchers who were at st research stations in Antarctica, oh, I don't know, like 50, 60 years ago now, where they were fascinated by this phenomenon about how they felt so much colder when they were outside when the wind was blowing, and they wanted to find some way to quantify it. And what they would do, actually, is they took rubber gloves and filled them with water at about the temperature of a human body temperature and hung the outside and saw how long it took for them to freeze. 
So, I mean, a human hand is sort of like a rubber glove full of water, right? So the rubber glove full of the water was losing heat about the way a human body would, and they quantified at different temperatures and different wind speeds how long it took to freeze those gloves. And from that, they could figure out things like how fast the glove was losing uh, heat and so on. And you have to be a pretty bored researcher out in Antarctica to have done all that work. But uh, it has later been improved upon and so on. But that's the basic story of how we came up with such an idea. Wind chill... It's better to think of it as sort of being just a measure of how fast you are cooling down. It is not really a, like, the wind chill temperature is not the temperature to which your body is going to cool to or anything like that. It, think of it as just sort of a relative measure of how fast you are cooling. When the wind temperature isn't all that bad, your body is not losing heat all that fast. When the wind chill temperature is low, your body is losing heat really, really fast. Wind chill is annoying when the wind chill is low, but it can also be dangerous. It can even be life-threatening. Um, there's two different medical conditions involved here. One is frostbite and one is hypothermia, and the public tends to use both of those terms very sloppily. Um, frostbite is when flesh freezes, when there, you know, your cells actually are now trapped in a matrix of ice. And it can happen actually surprisingly fast if the temperature of the air outside is below, I'm sorry, if the wind chill is less than about negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. If the, air temp if, the, if the wind chill temperature is that low, your body is losing heat much faster than your cells can metabolize it. And especially in any kind of exposed skin, like uh, especially parts of exposed skin that don't have great circulation, like the tips of your ears or the tips of your nose, the your body can free. They, you literally have ice in your cells, um, which, if not dealt with immediately, can become very serious. You, you can even lose the tip of your nose or the tips of your ears or whatever. Most of the time you hear somebody say, I've got frostbite, what they mean is they're really cold. They don't literally mean they have frostbite because frostbite requires a medical att medical attention uh, to avoid, like, you know, the death of the cells and so on. A much more serious situation is hypothermia. Hypothermia is the drop of the body's core temperature. Your body is 98.6 degrees, and if it gets lower than that, things start going wrong fast. The chemical reactions that go on in your cells don't proceed at the right temperatures, I don't proceed at the right rates, and so on. Your body works very hard to stay 98.6 degrees because that is the optimal temperature for how our cells and so on work. And so if you are in a situation where the actual core body temperature is gets even down to like 90 or 85, you're in serious life-threatening danger. By and large, both of those things are possible, hypothermia and uh, frostbite, but you have to kind of think through as to what's going on. I mean, for example, if you pull on a coat but no hat and gloves and try to run from the dorm to the classroom building, you're in grave danger of frostbite. Your tips of your ears and your tips of your nose and your fingers and so on could very well literally freeze, as in you need medical attention. On the other hand, frankly, running from one class to another, your body's core temperature, if anything, is probably pretty high right now. On the other hand, like, if you fall through the ice into a cold lake, you're not going to make it long enough for, like, the tips of your fingers to freeze and so on like that. As your body is losing heat to the cold water around you, your body's core temperature is falling fast, and without serious medical attention quickly, your body will stop and you will die. Um, that's why we always say, you know, that, I mean, like, yeah, there are other ways to get hypothermia, too. Uh, like, you know, anytime you're out exposed to cold weather, but not necessarily, like, bitterly cold, like zero degrees Fahrenheit or something like that, but, like, maybe temperatures in the 40s, hypothermia becomes a problem. If you just sleep on the ground with no blankets or anything like that in 40-degree weather, you can die of hypothermia. You're not going to get frostbite. It's only, like, 40 degrees outside. But... If you are losing, if your body is losing heat to the outside world faster than it can produce it, you can get hypothermia and die. It happens all the time when, like, campers don't know what they're doing or something like that. So there is a big difference between hypothermia and frostbite. Now, this has been a pretty long lecture, but we kind of covered a whole bunch of timely topics and so on associated from lots of different ideas throughout the book here. We talked about, like, what it actually meant, when was winter, and why there were different definitions. We talked about the different temperature profiles associated with formation of all different kinds of winter precipitation. We learned about how that related to a pattern of precipitation we saw 
We only worried about it along a warm front, but we could have done other weather patterns. We talked about different kinds of snowstorms like lake effect snow, and orographic lifting, Alberta clippers, nor'easters, and we learned about some important things about safety and winter weather and health. All right, now, before we are done done with this rather long lecture, let's do three more quick questions. Question 14. The wind chill temperature cannot be greater than the air temperature. True or false? Oh, that shouldn't be so bad. Make a choice from those two options and get a little feedback before you do number 15.